So welcome to the channel everyone. Today we're talking about Apple's latest beta release. And of course, this is iOS 14. Now, if you're an Apple user, this is good news for you because this update essentially brings a lot of those features that you know and love from Android. If you're an Android user, on the other hand, your stance might be that Apple is copying Android or they're finally bringing some of those features to the table. But the question is, are the new features enough for you to make the switch? So this video, we're gonna talk about some of the key updates for iOS 14. We're gonna take a look at the widgets, the new picture-in-picture -picture feature for your videos. We're also gonna take a look at some of the call, the display, Siri, the new app and app library, of course. And of course, we wanna take a look at the new double tap feature or triple tap feature that can get into some quick settings on your device. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So if you're new to the channel, I do everything tech from your streaming devices, tech reviews and unboxing and everything in between. So hit that subscribe button in the top right, smash that notification bell. Please drop your comments and questions in the comment section below. So not gonna waste too much time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the feature. So we're gonna start with the widgets. So widgets was one of the biggest feature that was brought over. Of course, Android users are gonna um, have their opinion on it. For me, I've used both devices. I currently own a couple Android devices and also own Apple device. So yes, Android had this first, but the question is, does Apple do it a little bit better is it more intuitive is it more precise and does it flow better with the operating system so i have a couple of widgets right here guys this is the four by two i would guess up top with my um, daily exercise and calorie count and at the bottom i have my weather now one cool thing about these widgets is that they're stackable. So the one up top is just a single widget. So it's gonna tell you everything about exercise. You can click into it and you can kind of see what your summary is. Now below I have three widgets and these are stackable guys. So you can see I can kind of scroll through and depending on which widget I'm on, it will go ahead and display that information. Now you can go ahead and go into the, the widget itself by just clicking on it, but you can also edit the widget to kind of see what's in there. Now I can't always go in and edit this, so if I do a long press on it. You can see I can check out the information, I can remove the weather, I can edit the stack. So if I go to edit stack, you can kind of see what's in there. So I have the weather, calendar, and it does have smart rotate. And what smart rotate is, basically smart rotate will actually rotate the app depending on what it'll think you want to look at. So maybe later when I open it up, it maybe a, an event is coming up close it might open the calendar it might display the calendar i think that's pretty cool so so to get to the rest of your widgets you can go ahead and just slide to the left all the widgets will be there if you do a long press right here you do have the option to delete these widgets or you can go ahead and search or add more widgets so if you click on the add you can see you have some widgets there that you can go ahead and add you have your notes right there podcast stocks so if i hit stock i do have three different size options so we have the two by two we have the four by two and we have the eight by eight, which is humongous. We also have a symbol. So um, completely up to you which one you want to add. So if I wanted to add this one, I'll just go ahead and click on add widget. The widget is now right here. Now this will not pop up on your home screen yet unless you move it. So I can do a long press here and then I can go ahead and move it to where I need to. Now, just like the other apps, I can go ahead and stack it here as well, guys. Just go ahead and drop it in there and it will become a part of that smart rotation. So like I said, this is pretty cool. I love this feature. This is one of my favorite features from Android. So let me know what you think of the new widgets that's available for your iOS device. So next thing we're gonna talk about is the actual application. So I have a lot of apps here. So Apple just introduced an app draw feature where if you scroll all the way to the right, you can see all your apps right there, guys, and they're grouped in categories. But if there's an app that you're looking for that's not grouped, and if you scroll down again, if you just swipe down, it will list your apps in alphabetical order. This is good news because when you install applications, it won't automatically show up here, guys. You can go ahead and go here, then you can do a long press, and then you can put it where you need to, which I think is pretty cool. Now, the sorting of the application, this part is done automatically. You can see up top, I have my suggested, I have my recent added, and scroll down, you have social, productivity, entertainment, and so on and so forth. But like I said, this is a, a step in the right direction. Uh, now, you don't have to have all your applications on your home screen. Instead, you can go to the category, or if you need to get to that app, or you're looking for a particular application, you can either search for it, or you can just go down in alphabetical order. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is picture-in-picture. Picture. Yes, picture-in-picture picture is available 
for your iOS device on iOS 14. But uh, just a disclaimer that YouTube is not yet supported, but there's a way to get around it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first of all, picture in picture how this works. And let me demonstrate here with Plex. Let me just play this video. This is a review that I did not too long ago. And if you click on the video, you now have this option right here to pop out the video essentially. So now that the video is popped out, you just kind of swipe up. And you can see the video is now uh, wherever you want to put it essentially. So you can drag it up or to the bottom or to the side. Pop it out. You can make it bigger. All right. So I think that's pretty cool, especially for me. Um, when I watch some of those videos, I want to go ahead and just listen to it. I'm not always paying attention. I just want to swipe it to the side. That way I can still listen to the audio. Um, I can always pop it out when I want to get back into it. And like I said, it's a cool feature. I like the fact that you can make it as small or as big as you want on the screen, essentially. Now, if you click on it, you have the option to pop it back in. And you can go ahead and swipe out. Like I said, that's one of my favorites for iOS 14. Of course, it'll work on your Apple stuff. So if you have Apple TV or the Apple TV app on here, it will work as well. But a lot of people are going to ask about YouTube, and this is how you get around the YouTube. So it won't work in a YouTube app, but if you open Safari and you go to YouTube, like I'm on a YouTube video right now, I'll go ahead and play it. And if I make it full screen like I have it there, and I click on it, I still get an option to pop it out. Now I can swipe up. And I have those same options, guys. Swipe it to the left, move it around wherever I need to. And I can go ahead and make it full screen again. So like I said, this is probably my favorite part of this upgrade. Let me know what you guys think, where you rank this. Uh, this is something that I've enjoyed on Android for a while. And um, I know even though the YouTube app is, is not yet supported officially, there is a workaround as you can see right there. But uh, I do expect that to be an addition in the future. So let's talk about Siri. So Siri, uh, instead of taking up the entire screen, they've now moved Siri to just a little round bubble at the bottom of the screen. So I love that addition. So if I say, hey Siri, you can see Siri's right there and I can ask her anything. Hey Siri, what's, uh -huh. the, weather, what's the weather like in New Mexico tomorrow? Looks like it will be partly cloudy in Santa Fe, New Mexico tomorrow. The high will... So the bad part about that is that while Siri is activated, you cannot interact with the apps in the background. So this is something that a lot of people are complaining about. I don't see how they can move forward without adding that functionality in the future. Summon Siri, I can use the power button still. So if I can do a long press here, it still pops up. But as soon as I touch something in the background, Siri disappears. So like I said, this is something I know they're going to improve upon in the future. I can't see how they can get away without adding that functionality as well. So another cool addition that they, they added is a couple quick launches for your device. So on the back of your device, if you do a double tap, you can set it to activate certain functions. So if I double tap right now, you can see it brings up my notification. And that's what I set it to do. If I do a triple tap, takes a screenshot and yet again this is something that I had to go in and set up so a lot of people know how to get to that it's very straightforward if you go to your settings you're gonna go down to accessibility you're gonna click on touch and all the way at the bottom you can see back tap so if you click on that you have the settings for your double tap and the setting for your single tap so pretty straightforward you have your list of um, actions that you can have it do uh, it is limited for now but this is something like i said i can see them expanding upon in the very near future so another addition that i, I thought was pretty cool is now when you receive calls it doesn't block out your entire screen so now when a call is placed guys Instead of taking up the entire screen, you can see it just pops up on the top. And from there, you have the option you can accept it or you can go ahead and deny it. And of course, this will be the same functionality with your FaceTime or anything call related. Now, the last thing I want to touch on, and this is probably a small addition for you guys, but for anyone that's an international traveler, this is a huge deal. So there's an app now that's part of iOS 14. It's called Translate. So I can either type or talk into it to have that translation. So if I click on the microphone, what time are you coming by to have dinner? So it did translate, but if you wanted to play it back, which a lot of people might want to do, let me turn up the volume here. All you have to do is click on it, hit the play button. 
So hopefully that's the right translation, but um, you do have a lot of languages here. You can see some languages are available offline. Some are already available. So you have Russian, Japanese, Italian, English, Chinese, Arabic as well. So that's another cool addition that I thought made it easier. A lot of apps out there already does this, but just to have that built in, I think is a great addition. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of the new iOS beta. This is iOS 14, set to be released in a couple months. Uh, it does have a couple um, bugs that I've noticed. Uh, the main thing that I've noticed is that my apps, if I put them in a folder, they tend to pop back out and you can see they're all over the place. So this is something that's currently in the works. They are making adjustments as we speak, but I do think this has a lot of promise. So in the comment section, let me know if you're an Apple user, if you're an Android user, then drop a comment. Let me know what you think of this new feature. If you're an Android user, is this something that make you want to take a look at Apple or iOS? If you're an Apple user, what are your thoughts on a new upgrade? That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll catch you on the next one.